Hey everyone, Veo here at Mobilitics and welcome to our patch 12.2 low elo tier list. We're settling into season 12 nicely now and we're already in the second patch. There are quite a few minor buffs and nerfs coming in this patch and also a couple of big adjustments too that we spoke about in our previous patch preview video. So go check that video out if you haven't already. Don't forget that the brand new champion Zeri is out this week too so get ready for her to hit the rift hard. She is a pretty awesome champion and keep your eyes peeled for some Zeri content coming in later on this week. So let's get straight into it and first off, of course, it's the top lane. In the god tier, we've got Garen, Dr. Mundo and Teemo. In the S tier, there's Malphite, Set, Shen, Urgot, Yorick, Sejuani, Jax and Darius. So Garen has always been a fantastic pick in lower elos. His simple kit combined with his ability to destroy a ton of matchups easily make him a beast in the majority of games. And he's actually sitting at one of the highest win rates in that top lane at the moment. Garen benefited hugely from the teleport nerfs that allowed him to be punished less for taking Flash Ignite, which is ultimately what he prefers as it really helps him get snowballing. Garen's health regen and sustain also make him so hard to force out of lane and he can honestly become impossible to punish overall. Shen got nerfed this patch with his Q receiving a 1% of max health nerf to this ability at all ranks. This is actually going to make a bit of a difference and should help bring his dueling and trading ability down a notch. The thing is though, Shen's true strengths lie in his ability to influence the map and contribute to games with his ultimate. Shen would definitely feel the impact of this nerf, but would still keep his place in that S tier just due to how effective this champion is throughout all stages of any game. Now despite Singed having a pretty low play rate, he's already in a very good position so far this season and has a crazy high win rate in both of the solo lanes. Singed has dipped in popularity massively since the Predator nerfs, but he's actually still very strong, especially when paired with allied champions that can further increase his effectiveness through movement speed. Demonic Embrace works ridiculously well with this champion, and now that Rylize is getting a buff that's patch 2 and adding some health at the cost of AP, we think he's only going to get stronger. Now although Singed is a very niche pick, be prepared to struggle against this champion when he is picked and maybe consider giving him a go yourself. Moving on to the jungle now and in the god tier we have Trundle, Ramus and Amumu. In the S tier we've got Master Yi, Nunu, Diana, Vi, Warwick, Zinjiao, Zac, Viego, Sejuani, Hecarim and Jarvan. So since her buffs coming into the new season, Diana has been absolutely everywhere and for a very good reason too. Diana's clear speed is one of the fastest in the game now and she absolutely obliterates camps with her passive. The fact that she can stack up so much farm and full clear so easily means she can get ahead of the game and by the time she starts team fighting, she absolutely melts entire teams. Diana is pretty simple to play and if you get the hang of how to power farm while still being effective around the map, you will genuinely climb ranks so quickly with this champion. Jarvan has seen a huge boost in popularity recently and probably partly due to his participation in the pro scene at the moment but he's just so damn effective at what he does. Jarvan can gank as early as level 2 and is one of the best junglers at repeat ganking and punishing lanes with no summoner spells. If you can't escape his EQ combo or his ultimate, you are genuinely dead and there's nothing you can do about it. Be careful picking Jarvan into highly mobile comps and likewise if you're picking against him, try to make sure you have some form of inbuilt mobility as this will make him far less impactful. Jarvan deals a very high amount of damage whilst he engages and is very tanky and hard to shut down too, so if he does get ahead you're going to have a very tough time against him. Don't sleep on this champion as so far in Season 12 he's having a fantastic start. Amumu is the last jungler for us to talk about today and as always he's just an absolute beast in low elo. Amumu has one of the highest win rates in the game right now and his impact is just so easily to pull off. His clearing is quick, his damage is decent and his crowd control is just so easy to win games with. Amumu can punish multiple champions at the same time so simply with his ultimate and he's such a menace when it comes to fighting over those early objectives. Honestly, Amumu will probably stay this high up in the tier list as long as he doesn't get nerfed anytime soon. So let's move on to the mid lane now and in the god tier we've got Anivia, Lux and Victor. In the S tier there's Akshan, Annie, Malzahar, Vex, Vigar and Lissandra. So Zed actually got a pretty decent nerf this patch. They've reduced the base AD ratio on his ultimate down to 65% from 100 which, although won't make a difference to his itemization, will definitely impact his strengths in those early all-ins. This isn't necessarily going to be game-changing for him, but it definitely will be noticeable, especially before you get stacked up with damage. Zed has always seen a pretty high ban rate in low elo, but if you're not fantastic at him, he can actually be pretty low impact. So let's just see how this champion progresses over the next few weeks. Victor is still in a ridiculously strong position in Season 12. There are tons of reasons why he's so strong and he's got one of the highest play rates across the board at all ranks this season. Victor's versatile itemization, safe laning, insane scaling and crazy carry potential all make him super abusable. And even though some AP items have been nerfed since he came about, there are still plenty of options that make him as strong as ever. 
The new Lich Bane changes may see some light too, as Victor can proc it so easily with his Q. But honestly, there are so many strong AP items to prioritise at the moment that we're not sure it's going to break the mould. Vigar is definitely one to watch this patch. He's got a cheeky little buff to the cooldown on his Q and also his ability power stacking scaling passive that is now granting him 3 stacks when he kills large minions and monsters. Vigar is a pretty situational pick let's be honest and he can struggle in the long range meta that we have at the moment but honestly in the right draft and the right team composition Vigar can actually feel crazy broken and that 200 years ultimate is pretty hard to mess up. Despite Vigar not being played as much as he has in the past, he's definitely someone you should not forget about, especially so in patch 12.2. Moving on to the bot lane now, and definitely not as much has changed as it did in 12.1. The meta has settled down a bit now since those big changes to Immortal Shield Bow, and those that didn't depend on it previously but were already strong are absolutely popping off right now. In the god tier, we've got Jinx, Jin, and Vayne. In the S tier, we have Caitlyn, Cogmore, Ziggs, and Ezreal. So Jin is probably one of the best champions in the game right now. His itemization hasn't been touched for a decent amount of time and he pretty much works into all team compositions and against most of them too. Jin can play with almost all supports and against most matchups meaning he's always viable and always able to dominate games when he gets that ball rolling. Jin's playstyle is fairly unique but his ability to weave in those insanely powerful auto attacks and burst down his enemies in fights make him super fun to play and extremely effective especially with the game having so much burst damage everywhere at the moment. If you made bot lane and you aren't playing this champion, you definitely need to ask yourself why. Ezreal has been flying under the radar for quite some time now, but in all ranks he's still performing very well and very consistently in general. Ezreal has always been that safe pick that you can take as early in champ select as you wish and it'll never really be too much of a bad decision. Ezreal's E allows him to play with less risk of being punished and also allows him to play pretty aggressively in lane and get that early lead that you always want to try and get in the bot lane. Ezreal's itemization is super versatile at the moment and there's plenty of strong builds that he can abuse. He's also one of the few AD carries making the most of Muramana, which right now is a pretty damn broken item overall. If you pair Ezreal with a strong sustaining support, you can honestly become ungankable and walk into the mid to late game with some serious damage. So despite Vayne getting hit a little bit by the shield bone nerfs last patch, she is still immensely strong and sitting in a crazy win rate across the board at the moment. Vayne's ability to scale up easier now and pop any type of target with those silver bolts is just what's making her so hard to beat in Season 12. Tanks are a little bit more common and she does deal with those easily. And in terms of bot lane, people are playing so many farming lanes and safe champions in low elo that she just gets a free ticket into that mid game where she can start popping off and crushing anyone she comes up against. Vayne has been dominating the game ever since preseason, and although she's had a few nerfs, it's not really made too much of a difference. She's still a fantastic pick in this season. Onto the support now and not too much has changed overall in terms of balancing for this role this patch, however we do have two huge adjustments for support that could definitely make an impact. In the god tier we have Leona, Sona and Soraka. In the S tier we've got Blitzcrank, Lulu, Lux, Morgana, Nami, Zerath and Zyra. Sona is still just as ridiculous as ever so far this season. Her scaling is just immense and most of the time she gets a free pass to scale with so many supports not knowing how to abuse her throughout the early game. Sona's impact and utility is pretty unmatched too. So many shields and heals, movement speed boosts, damage and even in a huge AoE crowd controlling game changing ultimate. Sona is so easy to be effective on too. As long as you position yourself correctly it's incredibly simple to utilise and abuse your kit meaning you're just perfect at carrying those low elo games and climbing at the speed of Hecarim. Tom Kench is back in the support role after receiving some pretty juicy changes that we covered in our 12.2 patch preview video last week. He's basically now being forced to go back down under where he belongs and should no longer be that terrifying top lane tank with 4 million damage. Tom Kench's grey health is now only going to be useful when near 2 or more enemy champions and his Q is now a 50% slow up from a 40% one. Tom's ultimate now also grants him a decent burst of movement speed when he uses it which allows him to save his teammates a little bit easier. He also grants them a much bigger shield too, so this should hopefully make him feel a little bit more useful as a support. It's going to be really interesting to see how strong TK is now he's back in the support role, so we're going to keep our eyes on this one. Janna is getting a lot of changes too. Raya kind of reworking the way her kit works and swapping and changing a few things, but honestly, it does kind of seem like a little bit of a nerf overall. Yes, her Q will fly faster, her ult will tick quicker and her shield will last longer, but there are quite a few changes that will take away from her old abusable playstyle of spamming those Ws and empowered auto attacks that honestly just allowed her to bully lanes in general. We have kept Janna in that A tier for now and we're going to see how she does over the next few weeks to really decide if it's going to change her win rate that much for better or for worse. What do you guys think of the changes and do you think she's going to be good or bad? 
Well, that's gonna wrap up our 12.2 patch tier list video for low elo. We hope you're enjoying season 12 so far and let us know in the comments who you're enjoying the most and who you're having most success with. I've been your host Vale and as always, take care.